Hey guys, what's up? It's Garrett. We're out here uh, still working on painting this this deuce, this uh, 2487 semi-gloss olive drab Vietnam era paint. And uh, I've got a lot of it done. I just wanted to kind of show you what it looks like and the progress we've made on it in just a day and a half. Um, everything taped up nicely. This is um, the third or fourth coat of base coat I've got it well it's it's a I should have mentioned that yesterday when I was talking about the paint it's not a multi-stage paint it's a single stage you know you throw your primer on and then you put your color on and that's it you don't have to color coat it you don't have to color sand it you don't have to do any of that shit so um, yes he asked me to leave his numbers and stickers on and stuff so he could locate his new ones directly over the old ones so that's what he got. Um, see, it looks pretty good. I did have to uh, thin this. I've never had to thin the stuff that I get in town from a Pasco because this, when I get paint from them, it's a flat, and uh, this is semi-gloss. And the difference is the st the stuff they put in the paints to make it flat is um, well, it's solvents. Flatteners is what they call them, but it thins it. So, this is quite a bit thicker. This is the first time I've gotten this color in particular from Rapco, but it would not spray even through my 1.8 millimeter tip until I thinned it. Uh, but, as you can see, it looks really nice. I've got great coverage. Um, so, yeah. And yes, we talked about this too. He's going to get new plates because they're so faded you can't read them and there was no point taping over them. I still, I forgot to tape the mud flaps, so I painted up as close as I could to them. Uh, I've got to tape those up and do some more painting. Uh, he's going to replace the wood on his troop seats because it is, I mean, if you look here, it's like rotten and busting and it's all warped. So... I'm just throwing some color on those for now. Not too concerned about like sanding them and making them all pretty before painting them. Just threw some color on to make it look not like shit for the time being. Um, you see all that rusty shit that was on the bedsides is gone. Now the reason that came up through their old paint is because they I think what they did is they completely sandblasted this thing down to bare metal and they just threw like one coat of primer on and one or two coats of color. They didn't use a sealer or anything and they did not put enough paint on it to protect from the moisture in Louisiana. So, of course, it had surface rust coming through the paint. Um, but I've got... Uh, let's see. I sanded that shit down. I osphoed it. And I put two coats of primer on it, and then three or four coats of color. So it is not going to do that again. And I, I actually really like this color. Um, I may have to do a vehicle in this color myself sometime. And this is pretty good for uh, doing it outside. You know, all you got to do is make sure it doesn't rain and the humidity isn't too high. Um, I did shoot some color yesterday. I ran out of daylight. I wanted to get a full coat on the whole truck, uh, and I ended up with some bugs in the paint on the hood, so I had to go back this morning and scuff everything down that I painted again with a red scotch bright pad, and then go back and spray it all again. Uh, but no bugs. Yeah, you can still kind of see some of my um, gun strokes in there, but as the solvent flashes off that'll all blend together so I like it looks good I'm happy with it you know this is a lot better than what they would have gotten in the motor pool I don't know how many of you guys know but in during these trucks service lives whenever they would get painted or the color scheme would change because the unit was being moved or the truck was being reissued and moved somewhere else most of the time they would get painted with either a mop and a bucket or a paintbrush. And, um, so yeah, needless to say, this is already a hundred times better than what they ever got in service. Um, 
probably the closest thing to a factory type paint job this truck will ever get again and if you're gonna ask about why the top is still on there and I didn't tape it it's because it's got a giant rip in the top of it and he's got a new one coming so um, no point in taping that shit off or taking it off to not get it painted but ah oh, shit I missed a spot look look right here see that yeah I missed a spot yeah, I missed it on the other one too. I'll have to bring the ladder back here and actually get up on there and get the top of this better. Uh, that's not too bad. And no, I'm not doing the inside of the bed. We talked about that. He didn't want to pay the extra, so. Alright. Just wanted to show you guys that. Tell you a little bit that I forgot yesterday, you know, about the single stage paint. And, um, you can put a hardener in it that makes it... Uh, hold up to UV better and it makes it uh, it gives it a higher chemical resistance and I'll show you that actually it's an ALK 200 hardener um, it's not necessary you absolutely do not have to use it uh, but it's just a little extra you know if you want it does make it your paint a little shinier so if you're going for a flat paint you'll have to add some more thinners in it uh, to bring it back down to the level you want after you add the hardener. So this is the hardener I was talking about. This is ALK it's 201, not 200, but it's for ALK 200 and 300 paints. So um, it runs me, I think it's like 20 bucks for this little can at my local auto paint and supply company. And by the way, that's what APASCO stands for, Auto Paint and Supply Company. Um, I don't know if they are like a national chain or not. I know there's a few of them around Louisiana, but uh, they're good, good business so far. You know, they take care of me. So, uh, oh yeah, I decided I'd be a nice guy and uh, paint this gas can for him too. And I, I may even clean up and paint his tools before they go back on the Pioneer tool rack. So we'll see. I'm not feeling super spunky today so that probably isn't going to happen but it might and if you notice i'm holding the camera closer to me it's because my friggin arm is tired from holding that spring on up half the day so i'm sorry about that if it's too close and my head is huge um but hey anyway thanks for watching i will see you guys on the next one please like the video if you actually like the video subscribe if you'd like to see more of this stuff and we'll see you later now let's see if this camera will actually shut off this time.